The Great Fool. Many don't know this. When Christians refer to the fool, they're referring to the incident in Genesis 3, in which the serpent comes to the first man and the first woman that God has created, Adam and Eve. This man, Adam, was created directly by God and was the first and only man to be born without the help of a human father, at least until Jesus. And he tempts them to rebel against the Creator. Adam and Eve fall into temptation, and they sin. They eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which God told them not to eat from, and they sin. Genesis 2 15 to 17, Amplified Bible. So the Lord God took the man he had made and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely, unconditionally eat the fruit from every tree of the garden, but only from the tree of the knowledge, recognition of good and evil, you shall not eat. Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of your disobedience. However, not only did their disobedience against God ultimately result in their deaths, but it also had implications for the entirety of the human species. Satan desired to be God, and this is just what Satan enticed an Eve with the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3, 1-5 Genesis 3, 1-5, Amplified Bible Now the serpent was more crafty, subtle, skilled in deceit than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent, Satan, said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God said, You shall not eat from it, nor touch it, otherwise you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die, for God knows that on the day you eat from it your eyes will be opened. That is, you will have greater awareness, and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. The serpent intentionally misrepresented the command of God by formulating a question designed to get the woman to express the command in her own words. After that, the serpent goes after the punishment that Eve has outlined. Many people have pointed out that Eve also mentioned that the tree must not be touched in her explanation. However, the story does not address this oversight in any way. That obvious addition does, however, alert the reader to the fact that Eve is giving her own rendition. Then her next phrase, also a variation, becomes crucial. She does not repeat the syntax of God's statement, you will surely die, but simply says, or you will die. She has not misrepresented God, but she has blurred a critical nuance. There is a distinction between the two, and the serpent capitalizes on the oversight by negating Eve's version rather than God's. The serpent knows enough not to deny the precise penalty as God worded it. God's forbidding of the tree need not lead us to infer that there was something wrong with what the tree gave. Remember everything was created good. Perhaps the tree would have use in the future, when the time was right, the first couple would be able to eat from it. One can liken this to the temptation of Christ when Satan offered him all the kingdoms of the world if Jesus would just bow to him. Luke 4, 5-7, Amplified Bible Then he led Jesus up to a high mountain and displayed before him all the kingdoms of the inhabited earth and their magnificence in the twinkling of an eye. And the devil said to him, I will give you all of this realm and its glory, its power, its renown, because it has been handed over to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship before me, it will all be yours. 
Nothing was wrong with Christ ruling over all the kingdoms of the world. It was his destiny. The temptation involved ignoring proper procedure and timing and seizing them through deviant means. Genesis 3, 6-7, Amplified Bible And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was delightful to look at, and the tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of the two of them were opened, that is, their awareness increased, and they knew that they were naked, and they fastened fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Adam's Role Where had Adam been during all of this? The text tells us, but for some reason we have been hesitant to accept it. Adam was present with Eve. Why is the serpent talking to the woman? The text is silent on the subject. Why isn't the man correcting the woman's statement? Again, there is no explanation in the text. Genesis 3, 7 through 12. Then the eyes of the two of them were opened, that is, their awareness increased, and they knew that they were naked, and they fastened fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool afternoon breeze of the day. So the man and his wife hid and kept themselves hidden from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? he said. I heard the sound of you walking in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten fruit from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Adam became the first spiritual leader in human history the moment he received God's mandate to rule over the earth. Initially, this meant supervising the garden and directing his family. Adam was tasked with being a good steward of his resources and relationships. Regrettably, he failed on both counts. When Eve gave Adam the forbidden fruit, he spoiled God's creation by eating it. Adam also mismanaged his wife by remaining silent when he should have spoken up, allowing both Eve and himself to fall morally. When God confronted him with his sin, he blamed others. Spiritual leadership isn't difficult. All it takes is a willingness to accept responsibility. Unfortunately, many spiritual leaders continue to repeat Adam's error by ignoring their responsibilities at home, in the neighborhood, at work, and in the church. They forget that while Adam's failure began at home, it quickly harmed all of his relationships, ruined the beautiful place he lived, and eventually devastated the entire world. And it can all be traced back to one spineless refusal to lead. Regardless of their titles, real leaders influence others. The story of Eve demonstrates the impact of negative influence. The word sin literally means missing the mark. It connotes a failure to be who one should be and do what one should do. Originally, man was made to be the created image of God, to live in union with God's divine life, and to rule over all creation. Adam and Eve's failure in this task is their sin which has also known as the fool of man. The fool of man means that man failed in his God-given vocation, and this is the meaning of Genesis 3. Adam and Eve were seduced by evil, the serpent, into believing they could be like God by their own will and effort. So when Adam and Eve sin, they become enslaved to sin in some ways, according to the Bible. But when they bear children, their children are also brought into this slavery or bondage to sin. So Paul will say in Romans 5 that, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, so death spread to all people, 
not one being able to stop it or escape its power, because they all sinned. Genesis 3, 13 to 19, Amplified Bible. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled and deceived me, and I ate from the forbidden tree. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, and more than any animal in the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life, and I will put enmity open hostility between you and the woman, and between your seed, offspring, and her seed. He shall fatally bruise your head, and you shall only bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will give birth to children. Yet your desire and longing will be for your husband and he will rule with authority over you and be responsible for you. Then to Adam the Lord God said, Because you have listened attentively to the voice of your wife and have eaten fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. The ground is now under a curse because of you. In sorrow and toil you shall eat the fruit of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread until you return to the ground. For from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. When they sin, they fall from God's goodness. They brought sin into the world. As a result, death entered the world along with God's curses. For example, we know that God cursed the ground. God also said that bringing children into the world would be more painful. However, the big idea is that death entered the world, causing separation and alienation for the human race and their relationship with God. And it is passed down through Adam and Eve's descendants. So the sin affects everyone who is related to Adam and Eve, which is everyone. Now, the counterpart to the fall in Christian thinking is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the Bible also teaches, Paul teaches in Corinthians, that all in Adam die, but all in Jesus Christ are made alive. So by blood, we are related to Adam and Eve. We are held captive by our sin. However, when we turn away from our sins and put our faith in Jesus Christ, we are joined to a new head, who is also Jesus Christ. And since we are joined to Jesus Christ, we are transferred from a life of death into a new life that consists of eternal life with God for the rest of our days. The one question on everyone's mind, regardless of their worldview, is what went wrong on this planet? And why is there death? And why? Is their suffering. Every world view is wrestling, and they all have various versions of that. And outside of the Bible, we don't even really have an answer as to why things went wrong. But if you look at the Bible, the answer makes immediate sense. The book of Genesis tells us that mankind rebelled against God, His goodness, His love, and perfection, and sought autonomy and the worship of self and destroyed all subsequent generations of men by separating themselves from God. And the federal hardship that was in Adam, representing all of mankind, extended down via each and every descendant. The Bible says we're all born having committed as if it were the sin of Adam. So in Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul says, there's a second Adam to save us from the first. And the first committed the fall, and the second commits the promise and salvation and redemption. 1 Corinthians 15, 45-49, New King James Version. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, 
became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual was not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. By mentioning Jesus' life, Paul recalls another parallel between Jesus and the Old Testament, the link to Adam. Adam represents the coming one, a type of Jesus. Adam gave us physical life, and Christ, the second Adam, gave us spiritual life. Both Adam and Eve give us life, but only the second Adam can give us eternal life. Adam may have given us life, but his main legacy is that many people died as a result of one man's sin. He left us with the legacy of death, but we have no grounds to complain because we demonstrate every time we sin that we would not have chosen any better than he did. The gift of grace from God is not like the trespass. Unlike Adam, who gave us both life and death, Jesus only gives life. And while we earned Adam's penalty of death, we are given God's grace as a gift. The human race can be divided into two groups, Adam and Christ. Every person you meet is either in Adam or in Christ, and the difference has eternal ramifications. Adam's path leads to judgment, which results in condemnation. However, the path of Christ leads to justification. God saves us in order for us to reign in life. That's it. To live lives of spiritual victory rather than spiritual destruction. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. Romans 5.18 The sin we inherited from Adam, known as original sin, is overcome by Christ's death because justification leads to life for everyone through one righteous act. Paul means everyone when he says everyone. Even though they are all born sinners, Christ's blood covers us until we reach the age of accountability, when a person can choose to transgress and reject his revelation. We are saved because of Christ's work. Many will be made righteous as a result of Christ's obedience. We can share in his perfect record because he lived the perfect life we should have. Parallels between Adam and Jesus Adam was the first man, created directly by God, the symbolic head of humanity. Jesus is the first God-man, the direct Son of God, the head of the church. Adam and Jesus both entered the world sinless. Where Adam fell short, Jesus triumphed. Adam depicts our earthly character. 1 Corinthians 15, 47-48 the first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. Just as our physical bodies die, so do we perish as a result of Adam's sin nature. Meanwhile, Jesus reveals his spiritual nature to us. 1 Corinthians 15, 47 to 49, New King James Version. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Adam was the figurehead of broken humanity. Jesus is now the head of the redeemed church. Other fascinating parallels can be found as snippets throughout the Gospels. In John 2015, 
Mary misidentifies the risen Jesus as a gardener, which was supposed to be Adam's job. And just as death came to all because of disobedience on a tree, Genesis 2.17, life came to all because of obedience on a tree, the cross.